What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. All right. So anyway, I, I want to talk about patience and risk today. I, I already did a webinar on patience, but I, I honestly didn't get to everything I wanted to talk about patience. So I want to talk a little bit more about patience today and, and it's specifically how, like how patience and, patience and risk kind of uh, go hand in hand with each other. So let's, uh, let's get started. Anyway, so we're going to go over the key traders of the week and there was a lot of them this week. So I'm going to try to get through all of them. Um, all the main ones anyway. Then we're gonna go over market sentiment as we do every single week. Um, we probably, we'll probably skip the group, the, the poll group choice just because um, I'm gonna do this video instead. And then we're gonna get into the heart of the webinar and we're gonna have a Q&A. And we can do Q&As. You, you know, we kind of figured it out last webinar that like, uh, if you, you know, like we'll just do a little bit of Q&A as we go. Um, I, especially if it's relevant, I'll try to get to them. And then we'll have a, a Q&A session, a, a small Q&A session at the end if, if for any last minute questions. I said it from the beginning, that big bear bar was the tell after a fail breakout got a joint. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was just on the wrong side. The thing was context, the, the whole context of the trade is, you know, kind of like, dude, like we're in this like such faders market and this is a, this is kind of a strong pre-market runner and like I can totally see us tanking, holding, trapping, and squeezing. And so I kind of want it, like I wanted to start early and start padding it and like start getting a cushion so that on the reclaim trade, like I'd be ready, I'd have a cushioned on the profit and it, like if I got that big squeeze, that would be a, such a great day. But yeah, that was a, uh, as a failed, I guess, you know, wrong side, but you know, wrong side long, but mitigated. So I, I just wanted to go over, my trades of this week, there was a whole bunch. Uh, I, Gene was one of the traders this week, and this was basically a support long where I bought it because 240 was holding. It, it's above VWAP. I had a really easy risk, and it's a very simple trade. And I, and I said in the webinar, I love simple trades. I love trades that I don't have to scale. And this is an example where I have a nice, easy, fixed risk here. Like under VWAP, I can get out at 35. It's going to be an easy trade, really simple risk. The risk reward's really, really good. And the thing with this stock is that it, it just squeezed everybody in surprise. And there was all of this volume, right? There was all this volume and we were holding over pre-market high. And I didn't want to buy the first bounce here because it was a little high. This kind of first bounce, it was a little high. I normally prefer them to be close to the 50% from the bottom to the top of the move. But because we had 240 here prior high, it makes sense that that holds. It's just, it's unfortunate for me that this didn't go a little bit higher and then I would have liked 240 a little bit better. So that's the reason why I didn't buy the first bounce here. I, I, I would have wanted a little bit lower for the first bounce, but you know, I can understand why, you know, it held high because 240 was the prior high. So anyway, I let this consolidate for a while and I, I really wasn't going to trade it until like we, we started seeing this stuffing action. And after the big stuff, we started holding for a significant period of time. And after we do this significant hold, I say, you know, the pop is too likely to come. And by the way, this had loads of shorts available too. The, the pop is just too likely to come. And even if the pop stuffs, I can, I'll probably get out for break even if it stuffs. So it's worth a try. It's worth, it's worth a try on the long. And so I bought it. I figured out in the webinar, this was actually like, I, I tried to put a sell at like 260 or 250 or something. Like I was putting my sales out immediately after I bought and I, and I can only imagine that I put, like, I know it was a mistake. I put like 160 and then it automatically filled. So I was like, crap. So I just put, I just, I just rebought that part at uh, 250 because we, we, I happened to buy it right as it went. So anyway, that was that trade. And so now to talk about the market sentiment. But last week I talked about how states were uh, talking about reopening the economy and how I ultimately felt like we should have a top. And I felt that top should be 280. And that we, so far I, I've been correct in that stance. 
But I felt like we should have a temporary top until we saw a hint of normalcy and things started to open up. In which case, um, I, I expected the stocks, the market to again attempt to pre-price and maybe even go higher, even undeservedly so higher before the economic output is even achieved again, right? Because that's what the market is. It's all about future expectations. But I still like I think that that's panned out pretty well. I, 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 I still expect the coronavirus names to remain plentiful as long as we don't have normalcy. So the theme of this week has been faders, right? And in a few short sentences, shorts are still maintaining control of the market. So the stock's range has lessened slightly. There's definitely more stuffing and that demand that just went straight up and dropping on lows. We're still seeing that. Um, the death line setups have been ideal. One thing that I want to point out is that we have seen a reduction in the FU pattern style moves because longs have certainly showed hesitation this week. Even longs might still go for that VWAP reclaim trade or buy on the dips, but they're likely not having the same kind of conviction. They're not using the same kind of size. I know I'm not. I'm being I'm definitely being more careful now. And that overall just leads to like if less people are buying the VWAP reclaim trade with less shares, that's less demand, right? That's that you know that's less demand that's more power to the shorts to win that vwap slash stuff battle or the dip you know people being like oh i'm gonna buy the dip but i'm they're gonna be tighter with their they're gonna be tighter with their sales so i mean it, we just it's just been a fader strong short selling market but it this this remains the same it still spells particular danger for shorts who add heavily into this kind of market you know who are used to getting these like v a frame or V shaped rejection, you know, upside down, upside down V, A shaped rejections and super faders. You know, if, if shorts are getting comfortable with this, it leads towards potential future squeezers. And like I said, the market participants here like have just been insanely red. Like, I mean, this has been definitely the shorts, shorts market. Ever, shorts have been rewarded heavily in this market. Large caps have basically remained flat. The good news about the market though we're still getting at least a gap per day we're still getting covid prs even in the middle of the day um we still have a, a stock that's leading the way i know that's just you know still keeping the bullish keeping us from entering the dead market and there's still solid range on all stocks even if the upward range has been limited right and you can see this upward limited range on stocks like peck which got pumped and is super low flow and still didn't go as high as it could have or would have if it were ran two weeks ago stuff like cpah that stuff today you know we're seeing that kind of stuff more likely now which when we're in the buyer's market that stuff just takes off the negatives in this market is stocks are it's not really a negative it's more of a bearish out tone it's more of a bearish tone to the market stocks are still fading hard we had that vbiv offering the hundred percent movers are fading you know like a couple weeks ago we had multiple a day and then we went to a few a day and now I think cpah got to a hundred percent i think it did but that's like the one and that was it so we're definitely losing those hundred percenters which is the fun stuff to trade longs are losing interest meaning it's starting to get unhealthy for shorts too meaning as long stop buying dips shorts don't get pops to short into so it it you know where it's good for shorts it's also hard like any short seller knows like when there's no pops it's hard to get in so anyway um what's next the spy is definitely showing the hesitation at the 280 level i expect that to continue um <clears throat> i believe we somewhat stay still into the first couple of states open and then i expect the pre-pricing to continue still going to get the coronavirus names and i do think that this that this fader market is going to taper a little bit we might start seeing a couple squeezers next week, but I'm going to not anticipate it. That's what that's where I've made mistakes in the past is I would anticipate that squeezer and, you know, eat shit a couple of times before I finally got the squeezer. I like what Bow says. I mean, dude, if you own a chat room, how do you not have a hundred percent win rate? Dude, if I just told everybody what I was going to buy before I fucking buy, like, that's why I, that's why I honestly can't fucking post alerts in, in like, I just can't like, yeah. Like, even if like because you know like e even if you tell someone don't don't follow me I'll, yeah well, i know a lot of people will like yeah yeah and, and, and if you do have a following how do you ever fucking lose <laughs> yeah yeah i no, i agree and there are some times like when we're in mic and it's like 10 minutes before a line i'm like okay 250 possible area i think that's yeah, like a good that's time to give an alert but if it's like just bought a 250, that you know people are gonna be like, oh, I'm buying too, because like you know Harry's and master tape reader Harry who holds minus three dollar <laughs> a share. <laughs> uh, that's funny though. 
No, yeah. Large cap would be fine. All right, guys. I will uh, see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, Harry, for coming All on. All right. Perfect. No problem, bro. And uh, take care. All righty. See you Talk guys. To you see ya. For sure. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.